dive right in. You may not have heard 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 of Estonia. You may not know much about it, um, or what you have heard may have come in bits and pieces. You may know that it's a former Soviet state that it regained independence in 1990. Um, and you may know a couple things here and there, like they make some of the world's best pianos, um, or that character from Tintin, Flight 714, was Estonian. What you may not realize is that over the last 20 years, the country has been undergoing a transformation that's no less profound and no less relevant than, uh, say, Singapore. Uh, in less than a generation, Estonia has increased its GDP nearly 10 times. It's joined the Eurozone, which, and successfully, uh, it's joined NATO, it's joined the OECD, and it's joined the European Union as well. So from a former Soviet, post-Soviet, post-communist state in 1990, they've done some remarkable things. One of the ways, the key strategic decisions they made early into the country's development was to leverage technology, uh, and specifically software. That is, uh, in, in a country that's so small, the, the defining feature of Estonia is really that it's uh, 1.3 1, 1 million people. Uh, you really need to, to rely on something, otherwise your tax isn't going get, to get, get, get collected, your accounting isn't going to get done. So very early on, they started building out their systems, core government systems, digital first. And so you have an e-tax system, then they went to e-healthcare, uh, e-school, and Andres will talk a little bit about this in a second. A couple years ago, they realized, hey, we've built an e-utopia, -e -e uh, but we're still a million people. So the idea became, how do you take all these advantages all this stuff that you've built in the digital sphere on a government uh, governance, government perspective and, and, and export it far and wide. The idea they came up with they called e-residency, and I actually have an e-residency card in my pocket here. This is the first government-backed digital ID that's available to anyone. You can sign up for it. I can sign up for it. Uh, you pick it up at the embassy, give them your fingerprints, do an interview, and all of a sudden you have access to all these Estonian systems, um, the e-healthcare, e-school, what have you, as though you were Estonian. Now, why does this matter? Well, for the simple reason that if you're an entrepreneur, um, you can all of a sudden sign up to create a business in Estonia on a web form in 15 minutes flat. And if you're in a country that might not accept PayPal, like, say, Malaysia, you can create, you can get this card, stick it into your computer, register an Estonian business, and uh, open an Estonian bank account and get, get PayPal in Estonia. So it's playing with the ideas of what is a nation state in a digital world. What does government, what is government's obligation? What is their role? Fundamentally, we found that it's been a bit of a catalyst um, because the government, if you look at this timeline, uh, is doing things a little bit backwards. What country uh, starts marketing a program before they've, they've decided, they've set the laws on it? Or what country starts uh, developing it without having figured out the team yet? Or uh, what country starts promoting it internationally before they have the website so that you, you, can, uh, you can apply remotely? In many ways, this is government acting like a startup. Fail fast, ask for forgiveness, not for permission. Um, and it's, it's sort of a redefinition of what you'd imagine government would be. So if we look on the next page, there's, ah, ah, awesome. You're seeing that they're looking at the use cases for this very much like a, a startup would, 
who, are, who might our customers be, how might we best serve them. You'll see stuff in here like e-residency can absolutely transform the logistics industry. Shipping. 30% of shipping costs, to some extent, are conducted because two parties can't figure out how to sign a contract or a landing bill together. All of a sudden, you can use Estonia as a trusted third party. Remember, it's an EU, uh, it's a full-fledged member of, uh, of EU and NATO to, uh, to identify you. And now you can use the chip that's on this to sign contracts and documents digitally. So we're looking quite broadly at what the individual use cases are and what the corporate use cases are. But they, fit, they fall squarely in the theme of this conference, which is on the, in the, in the individual side, it's to promote collaboration. Um, and on the, the corporate side, it's to promote productivity more generally. Another case we're looking quite strongly at is the construction, the construction industry. If you have a, country, uh, uh, a party in one country that wants to build a building and they'll hire an architect in another country and a design firm in the third, uh, you need a, a go, be, go between among them. So if you look at the landscape of what the government's come up with so far, they have, they we're focusing it largely on the corporate use case for now, though you can of course pick up the, the card and use it to sign and encrypt whatever document you'd like. Um, They've already built out the systems to register companies, to pay taxes, uh, and, you know, the PayPal in integration and all is working fine. So the idea is really that they've built it already for the Estonians themselves. The marginal cost of issuing this ID card uh, is actually quite low. So it allows government to act like um, in a very positive some way. If you look at most of human history, uh, the world was, was constructed and fought over in a very zero-sum way. The point of a military is for me to get some territory so that you don't have it. And governments evolved thinking zero-sum, especially when it comes to tax, taxation and corporate residency. Estonia, by contrast, is making this available far and wide to anyone who asks for it. And in doing so, they're engendering a positive sum mindset, which is ultimately what I think the kind of thinking you would need to start really tackling deep set productivity and, and collaboration pr problem. And by the way, this is largely what I spend my day job on at SAP, thinking about simplification. So if we look at the next page, why does Estonia, and we look why Estonia, and why Estonia is uniquely qualified to do this, why would you trust this, this little country. Well, it's a country that in so many ways uh, had a very difficult past. And so they wouldn't screw up their, their, their emergence on the world stage by, by, by issuing these cards and giving a trap door. Uh, you also have to trust that the country's motives today are pure because the population isn't going to grow exponentially. It'll grow linearly, and so for Estonia to continue to punch above its weight, for it to continue to have an outsized impact um, in the cyber and the e-government sphere, it needs to learn to, to export this stuff. And I think this all speaks to, if you abstract it up a level, what are the characteristics of innovation economies and innovation systems? It shouldn't surprise you that the government is acting like an innovator like this, because they're deeply authentic. They know every day they sort of wake up and say, okay, we have to get our, our act together as a country, otherwise Russia. So they know why they're doing what, what they say they're, they're doing. There's an existential threat, so there's an urgency there. There's also humility because you only have a million Estonians. The power distance isn't very high. Um, you know, you might see the um, a minister buying groceries uh, in, in, in the shopping cart next to you as you're buying, buying, buying groceries. Um, and finally, the only way that any of this happened, this, this is sitting at the top of a long history, a long chain of government services infrastructure. It came through straight discipline. There aren't too many Estonians, so every Estonian had to figure out where, um, 
where, where they could best fit. And so my background, my experience was largely in Silicon Valley and in, in, in startups and in innovation systems, and this was uh, an incredible natural fit. I spent the earlier part of 2015, a few months in Estonia. Andres and I will talk about that in a couple minutes, but for now I thought I'd, um, I would key it up so that you would at least want to meet a real Estonian rather than a fake one. So Andres, please. Take it away. Okay, thank, thank you, Aman. And uh, I, will, I will take over from, uh, from here, giving some uh, background uh, how Estonia came to offer the so-called e-residency platform to the world and what was really the, the reason and what was happening uh, before that in Estonia. As, an, as Aman already mentioned that actually everything happened with the electronic ID cards that was introduced in 2002 and, um, and that was really the the, the basis for all the e-government services and also private services that were built around that. And uh, this card is now um, a com compulsory for all, all the Estonians. It gives you a dig digital uh, number so that you can be identified in the, in the internet and, uh, and that number is actually a public number. So um, that also helps to connect various databases uh, with your data but uh, to access these databases, this, um, uh, this means you need also like uh, two level of uh, public, uh, public key or security key um, infrastructure. Um, and, uh, and we see that, uh, well, it is also like a law in Estonia that uh, all the data, all the health records, uh, bank records or what, whatever, they are, they are your records. So the, the bank cannot use them uh, other than providing services to you or, uh, for example, the health records, the hospitals can only use it for, for your services. And uh, we can also check uh, who has checked our data. So everybody who logs in uh, into, into the system, and the only way to log into the system is through the ID card. You can't, there are no other back doors. Um, that, that means that you always leave uh, like, a, like a footprint, and uh, that, that is always locked. Uh, and um, from 2002, we started uh, all kind of uh, e so-called uh, e-government services nowadays. Um, I think the, the best known is uh, how quickly you can uh, start a business in Estonia, really in 15 minutes and everything is done. Um, the tax, you, you can all report your taxes, are they personal taxes or, or company taxes, uh, very quickly. Uh, I think already like 90% or even 98% of people are using that and uh, all the banking transactions are actually digital. So um, there is very few bank offices remaining in, in, in Estonia, physical offices. And uh, why, why it is good to do business in Estonia? Um, it is, we have a very unique so-called business uh, environment or uh, legal environment. We have a flat tax rate, which is 20% for everybody, for the for people, for physical persons, and, uh, and also for the companies. But the companies pay the tax only when they take out the money from the company, meaning that dividends are taxed only. So if you keep it in the company, you grow with the company, you don't pay any, any corporate tax. And uh, that really makes a difference uh, when building and expanding your, your businesses. And of course, these very, very simple rules have, uh, together with the e-tax e boards and all, all other kind of uh, business support uh, mechanisms, uh, electronic mechanisms uh, have put Estonia on the very high level of different ratings, uh, are they business ratings or economic freedom index. Actually, we are the number one country in the European Union uh, in this, uh, so meaning that how little the government is involved in hindering your, your business activities. And uh, that is very easy to to deal with the government. And we also have a law that uh, you only once have to give the, your, your data to the government, meaning that your address or, uh, <coughs> or what, what, whatever, the, your name. And, uh, and then the government has to sort it out between the different databases themselves. So uh, you don't need to start writing every application again. Everything is already pre-filled and actually the tax uh, tax um, report or uh, tax declaration is, uh, is as well already pre-filled because uh, all, the, all your employers give the 
information, how much, much salary you are getting and how much uh, um, your tax is already paid, paid from that. And, uh, and also the, the banks have to give the information as well. So you're just uh, checking, is everything okay? Or if you have done some uh, um, yeah, sponsorships or uh, um, giving, giving money out to, uh, how you call them, being like a charity. charity, yes. So that you can really even uh, yeah, d uh, get uh, like a tax refund from, from that. And usually the tax refund uh, uh, comes in within a week if you have done that after reporting your taxes. And um, all this business environment has also created um, like a startup boom in Estonia. I hope that everybody knows what Skype is. Um, and uh, I hope that some of you know that uh, Skype is very strongly connected with Estonia. All the, all the founding engineers were Estonians and uh, and still, uh, right now, the, the biggest Skype, Skype office globally is, is in Estonia. Um, so we can call this uh, so-called startup phenomenon uh, as a Skype phenomenon that has happened in Estonia. And uh, uh, now recently, we, we also have a, like a second unicorn, TransferWise, which, with Estonian founders, which is really based in, based in London. Uh, headquartered in London, but uh, they are now already valued over one, one billion US dollars with uh, the recent um, f funding from uh, Andresen and Horowitz from, from here in Silicon Valley. But it's, it's not only the startups the per capita that we are good at, uh, there is also very beautiful women in Estonia. <laughs> I don't talk about men, we are also beautiful. But uh, really the per capita number of international fashion models is the biggest in, in Estonia. And, uh, and then, of course, a uh, very good platform for the innovators, uh, startups, and, uh, and venture capitalists to really meet and network uh, is the Latitude 59 event in, in Estonia, in Tallinn. And next year, it's in the end of May. So please keep an eye on that. Uh, please come and join us, or you can also view it uh, over, over the internet. So that was my very brief discussion uh, or introduction to, to Estonia. So what, what has happened before we introduced uh, e-residency to the, to the world. So thank you.